<laughs> memories, memories, making clips, isn't it? We decided to make this comic together, um, but we didn't really know each other very well. And Eric kept saying, just ask me anything, ask me any question um, at all. And I think the first thing I asked him was, what are you thinking about when you close your eyes and you're playing the djembe before you say each poem? And he said, um, when he closes his eyes, he's thinking about flying past his mother's house, but he doesn't recognise it. My mother warned me. My father, he warned me. They said, when you reach the top of the hill, do not sigh. Do not show any signs of tiredness. On top of the hill I sighed. I took deep breath. I was tired. That was when I saw Jukuke and his friend Mevumba, who took me away. When I draw people, I think about them quite a lot. And when it came to representing Eric's mother in the comic, I thought about her quite a lot and how it must have felt to see your teenage son have to leave home in the way that Eric did. And then um, to not see him again for decades, like she even thought he was dead. Someone had told her that he died and she had no way of finding out if it was true. As a mother with a seven-year-old boy, I just can't imagine that. Um, I, met, I met Nikki. Nikki attended um, this literature workshop that we did. Um, it was partly telling my story and then getting people to write about. Um, and Nikki was sitting very, very close. I, she, she looked a bit suspicious. Did I? <laughs> no, and then that was it. And then we just kind of bonded. And um, yeah. Well, I was, I was looking for people to work with, um, collaborating on poetry comics. Um, and you just popped up in um, my hunt um, Thank you very much. Thank, and I'm glad I popped up because I, I like your, your powerful images that you conjured. I mean, I, you, you brought those words to life and, I, mm. uh, and I'm glad we, we kind of chilled. It was really um, different working on your poetry compared to a lot of people that I've collaborated with. Um, and I felt right from the beginning it was really important to try and get it right. Yes. Like a lot of the time working with writers, you know, I feel I can play around a little bit and I felt I felt with yours a very strong um, responsibility okay. to get your story right, yeah. at the beginning anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for you. <laughs> that day, I prayed in a tongue I did not understand, in a language I did not speak. I laugh. Rain bouncing on my back, my wrinkles hiding the passage of time. Living as a stranger amongst my own, I cry. <laughs> oh my god. This poem, this poem, that poem, I don't like that poem. No, that poem is too... Let's take you to a place. Yeah. Bad place. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But I'm okay with that. I'm okay. Yeah. I just don't... Um... I, I moved to London and I was working and then in 2013, I received a letter and Home Office is summoning me. Like I've been living in this country from 2007 till 2013, illegally, 
This is not possible, you know. I'm married. I've got children. <laughs> What's good? But then, because I did not extend it, I did not extend it. Um, again, I became the more likili because I had to start again from scratch. And in 2016, I brought out the Pro's Asylum. The things that I saw going through this process again. I mean, if you are soft spirited and mentally soft, it's you can it's, you can commit suicide because it's. Um, it was horrible. It was horrible from the, the treatment people receive when they come into the country. But I was fine because I had friends already and I, I could write, I could express myself. But I saw things that I almost became the millipede. You know, I wanted the gods to render me blind and deaf because I did not believe that we live in Wales with all its resources and the kind of ways in which they treated human beings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is why I brought asylum out. Mm -hmm. But now I'm a, I'm a resident. I I, I I I never became a refugee. I was no. not given that privilege to become a refugee. <laughs> but um, I've always worked in this milieu to give other people's voices to speak for themselves. And because um, only only so imagine yourself. So you met me on for the very first day, and you said, "Oh, Eric, can you tell me how you came to this country?" And I recounted to you the things that you know now. Mm -hmm. You'd be freaked out, wouldn't mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I came across um, an organization called Literature Wheels under Peter Finch, and they invited me to a place called Clandidno. Mm -hmm. And they had a conference, this was in 2001, and they had a conference on literature and trauma. Now, I'd never heard about trauma before, so... You just lived it. Yeah, yeah, you, I, I, have lived, yeah, yeah, I yeah. was an embodiment of it. Yeah. But um, So I met Kate Eddy, and Kate Eddy had just come back from Iraq, the journalist, the BBC wow. journalist. Yeah. So she stood there and she spoke about traumas and the trauma. Like, I still didn't make, put two and two together. And, um, then I realised that people wanted to speak on my behalf, but they could not comprehend my story. Mm -hmm. So they would call me, you are a refugee, you are this. So I became a collective. Yeah. But then I thought, no, no, I was the only one who could tell my story. I think it's a really important story to tell. Um, I love how illustrating something can open it up to people. You know, um, people who might not like to read poetry, but they might feel differently with the pictures there. Comics are really good for that. I think they should be made much more of in the classroom. word for stick insect then? Or um, you made this up? No, no, I, 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 I'm trying to look for its equivalent because I know it looks like a stick insect but it's even thinner than a stick insect. Ah. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so the stick insect is small, yeah, it has more weight than the molecule. The molecule is tiny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you can play like and it might just fall into pieces. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it's, it's persistent, <laughs> it's resilient. Mm -hmm. And it, it it gets what it wants. Yes. Yeah, yeah. A bit like you. <laughs> but this is why I use it as a metaphor for what one has gone through, you know, mm -hmm. and because there were many times in my life, even when I came to Wales, I could have given up. People who labelled me, people took away my name. So I've been fighting this fight constantly, constantly, constantly. And I had many reasons to give up. Mm -hmm. But many reasons not to give up, if you see what mm -hmm. I mean. So the, if I think about the molecule pushing the boma tree, the iroko tree, mm -hmm. and it is still pushing it, if it can do that, I have no reason to give up. Even though what we've made um, is aimed at Key Stage 3 secondary school, there's always the potential to use comics and poetry to look at things like metaphor and symbolism at any age. The molecule killy in trio. Guff your toys and lower. Ama, and Hamri, Croeso, Medai. Rudid, be the seren and disclerio. Nid, Odan, a crockbread. Amar faithful at Argal Heavid and Gemraig, 
yn isriadol y bwysig oherwydd bod e yn eu hangi, bod, bod e'n dod ag dimensiwn newydd, dwi'n meddwl, i ddiwylliant Cymraeg. Mae hwnna'n bwysig, mae ma, pa ma, pa ma, pa ma unrhyw waith mewn gwirionydd yn dod i mewn i'ch gwlad chi o'r ille arall. Mae fe yn creu, uh, gwedwch, os ydych chi'n edrych ar ddiwylliant gwlad fel ti, wel, mae'n creu, creu stafell newydd, mae'n creu rhywbeth newydd yna, lle ydych chi'n gallu mynd a gweld y byd mewn ffordd wahanol, nes ffenest newydd os lwcwch chi, ydych chi'n gallu edrych allan ar fyd, ar, ar wlad gyfarwydd yma, neu'r byd cyfarwydd mewn ffordd newydd. Felly, dwi'n meddwl hwnna'n gyd yn bwysig iawn. Um, ar yr un pryd, dwi'n meddwl bod yn, yn bwysig hefyd bod ni'n uh, ni croesawu y math yma o beth yng Nghymru, bod ni'n croesawu pobl, uh, mae hynny yn, yn, yn bwysig uh, yn gyffredinol felly, bod ni'n rhoi lle a chroeso i bobl o wledydd eraill yn y wlad hon, ac yn mynd yn groes i'r I'r narratif cyffredinol falle sy, uh, sy, uh, sy'n cael ei fwydo uh, gan Brexit y dyddiau yma, bod ni fel Cymru felly yn rhoi croeso i bobl. Um, uh, fel pobl felly, bod bobl hynny uh, yn gorfforol yn dod yma i Gymru. Ond rhan arall bwysig o hynna, wrth gwrs, yw nid yn unig bod y bobl yn dod, ond bod ni'n rhoi croeso i'r, i'r i, i eiriau a phrofiadau'r bobl yna hefyd. Uh, a mae hyn yn un ffordd wych o wneud hynny. A, um, mae'r gair, wrth gwrs, mae'r gair croeso yn, yn un o'r cerddi yna. Mae ma, ma, ma tua diwedd yn, yn, yn y gerdd. Uh, Mae'n ma, 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 ma ar pwysig iawn, dwi'n meddwl. 